Hello folks, welcome back to The Slice. The ATP World Tour Awards are coming up. And I'm gonna preview who should win what right now on The Slice. Before we get going, last week I talked to you about this giveaway that we're doing of this big tennis bag. Uh, it's worth a lot of money and you're gonna get it. Before that happens, we're gonna do a couple of preliminary giveaways of these Yonex bag sleeves. So all you have to do is follow us on Instagram. I'm posting a picture there right after this video goes up and you can get that in your mailbox for free. You don't have to pay any money, it's amazing. Also, if you wanna write articles for The Slice, also for free, send me an email at theslicetennis at outlook.com and we'll get you going. Now, the ATP finals are happening soon. I don't actually know exactly when because it's really hard to find on the ATP World Tour website when exactly they're happening, but there's a bunch of categories and I'm about to break down who's gonna win what or who should win what, in my opinion. So, the first one, the, most, the biggest uh, elephant in the room here for everybody watching I know is Player of the Year. Who is going to be Player of the Year? And it's actually already decided because Wikipedia tells me that the Player of the Year just goes to the year-end number one, and that is going to be Rafael Nadal. Now, you think that this would give, oh, it's decided, it's going to give Rafael Nadal fans and Federer fans something to agree on. Not even close. That's not going to happen because there's huge controversy in this because Federer has actually won more tournaments than Nadal this year. So Fed fans will be like, well, he's actually the number one because he's won more tournaments. And uh, there's a couple stats that we can compare with these two guys right now. So Federer's winning percentage this year was 92%. Uh, he was 49 and 4. So that's unreal. Nadal's percentage was actually only 86%. But Nadal played eight, 76 matches and Federer only played 53. So even though Federer won more tournaments, Nadal won way more matches. And he put himself out there and he played more, collecting more points. And that's what actually gets you to be world number one is points from tournaments. And Nadal did more of that, and that's why he's world number one. So, player of the year rightfully goes to Rafael Nadal this year. And uh, there's still going to be bitterness on both camps. I know, but can't we just all come together and just agree that this has been a great year for the two greatest tennis players of all time. The next category is doubles team of the year. I'm just going to say Henry Kottinen and John Pierce because they're ranked number one. And I don't really follow doubles yet. Not going to lie, guys. Sorry for watching this. Coach of the year, in my opinion, is Daniel Valverde. Gregor Dimitrov's coach because Gregor Dimitrov for the last couple of years has been floundering in mediocrity. He has not been able to find his form uh, for the last couple of years and he had a tough little dip in his career because at the beginning, when back when he kind of burst on the scene 2012, 2013, we are like, oh, it's baby fed. It's the next big thing. But he slumped and he wasn't able to find his form. We saw lots of videos of him smashing rackets like I covered in my last video. Go check it out. Uh, but Daniel Valverde has come on board and he's turned his career around almost. So Gregor Dimitrov has is having a great season. He's qualified for London. Uh, he's won two or three, I think, two or three. He won Vienna, or not, sorry, not Vienna, Brisbane and Sofia at the beginning of the year and almost took out Rafael Nadal in an epic match in the semifinals of the Australian Open. He won Cincinnati, which I was at, and he played amazing there. He's been a little bit up and down this year, but he's had a, his best year so far, and he's at the Nido ATP Finals, and it's going to be great. So I think that Daniel Valverdu who I met, and he actually said he'd look for me on Twitter because I was trying to get an interview with Dimitrov at the tournament. He said, yeah, I'll look for you. Just message me. He didn't message me back when I reached out to him. So I'm just going to move past that because I still think you're the best coach of the year, Daniel Valverde. So in that's my opinion, who should be coach of the year. So most improved player, there's some nominations by the ATP World Tour.com. Those nominations are Pablo Cranabusta, Andre Rublev, Denis Shapovalov, and Alexander Zverev. Um, and in my opinion, Pablo Crano Busta is the most improved player of the year because he started the year outside of the top 30 and now he's, and he was inside the top 10 at one point. Uh, and he's still contending to, uh, make it to the ATP finals. He's trying to contend there. So other guys in this group, like Shapovalov have moved more places this year. Um, but it's easier to move from hundred to 50 than it is from 30 to 10 because the points that you can get from a single tournament, like doing well at a single tournament, like a 50 or an ATP 250 or 500 event could move you 100 spots when you're lower ranks. But when you're in the top 30, even two, getting 200 points one week could maybe only mean, move you like a couple spots. So you have to be consistent and provide consistently high quality tennis and good results. Pablo Grana Busta at age 27 has like found his rhythm and has been able to up his game to a consistent level where he's just dominating, not dominating, but he's killing. And he had a great run at the US Open. And uh, now he's a solid player on the ATP or two or who everyone has to take seriously. So I think that that puts him as my most improved player of the year. 
Next is the ATB star of tomorrow, and that goes to my man, Denis Shapovalov from Canada. He's the star of tomorrow because he's got the game that's going to take him there. He's going to win majors because of his forehand. He's got a crazy forehand. He's got insane quickness and speed and flexibility. His backhand's good still. It's one-handed, but it's solid. Um, he doesn't have a slice, apparently. I was watching him in the Paris, and they were talking about how he like, literally is just learning how to hit a slice backhand. The slice. He's got to learn that. Um, and once he does, he's only 18. So he's got a huge serve, and his game is going to take him to the heights of tennis, I think. And we're looking at a featured Grand Slam singles champion from Canada, which I don't think has ever happened before. Um, comeback player of the year. There's some... Nominations from the ATP again, Roger Federer, Kevin Anderson, Cedric Stebby, and Yanko Tipsarevic. Roger Federer is the comeback player of the year, guys. He's 36 years old. He came off of a bad injury and just worn out body from last year, missed six months of the tour, and he's come back to have one of his best seasons of all time, which makes no sense at age 36. He's won two majors, three Masters 1000s. He's won 94% of his matches this year, guys. It's insane. He's the comeback player of the year. ATPWorldTour.com fan favorite. It's Roger Federer because he's won it the last 13 years in a row. Since 2003, he's won it every single year. And uh, so there's, I'm just, that's not even biased there. It's just what's going to happen. ATPWorldTour.com fans' favorite team. Uh, like I said, I don't really follow doubles, but, you know, probably the Bryan Brothers. The Stefan Edberg Sportsmanship Award. There's some nominations. Roger Federer. We got Marin Cilic, Juan Martin Del Potro, and Rafael Nadal. I'm going to say that Roger Federer is probably going to get it again because, like us, he's won it 12 times in the last 13 years. Uh, Rafael Nadal got it once. But just as far as, you know, traditional history, Federer's probably going to win it. And lastly, the Arthur Ashe Humanitarian Award is probably going to go to Rafael Nadal because he started the Rafael Nadal Academy this year, which is awesome, helping Spanish tennis a lot. Uh, second place, I would say, well, in the future, Nick Kyrgios might win this because he is starting the Nick Kyrgios Foundation, which is he plans, he says he plans to build a facility for kids uh, who can't afford to play or underprivileged kids in Australia to go be able to play sport or be, uh, play sport, be a participate in sport do sport at his uh compound that he's gonna be build in either melbourne or brisbane and i think once he does that he'll definitely be able to get this award but he's not doing it for the awards he's doing it for the kids well folks that's my breakdown of the atpworldtour.com awards there's a longer version of this which i know you want on our podcast that is going to be coming out very soon so stay tuned for that subscribe to us on instagram or follow us on instagram to be able to win this bag this bag right here could be yours we got two of them actually we're giving out two that just showed one twice, but here's two. Um, and you got to follow us on Instagram, and the instructions will be on there. So go do that, and I'll see you next time. Go to thesliceTennis.com, like I always say, for great articles. And email me at thesliceTennis.outlook.com to become a writer for us. Thanks for watching.